Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Day. And I'm Bo Leung. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Health chief allays concerns about smuggled rotten meat from the mainland. Tents outside LegCo complex removed with no trouble. And leaked documents show French ministers were spied on by the U.S. Health chief Ko Wing Man is playing down concerns that smuggled food from the mainland might reach local markets, saying stringent measures are in place. Ko's remarks follow the gruesome discovery of rotting frozen meat from the 1970s being smuggled through Hong Kong back to the mainland. Health Secretary Ko Wing Man said frozen meat products imported to Hong Kong are monitored by the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department. He added that the products will also have an import license issued by the Center for Food Safety and authorities will also conduct random checks on the frozen items. Coast Assurances follows claims by mainland authorities that some 800 tons of smuggled meat discovered in Changsha in Hunan province had passed through Hong Kong first. What was astonishing about this seizure was that some of the meat, which included beef, pork, chicken feet and duck necks, had been stamped with dates as far back as the 1970s. When authorities found the meat, some had already gone bad. Mainland authorities say the meat was reported to have been smuggled into Hong Kong in containers before being packed and sent on to Vietnam. And from Vietnam, the packaged meat was then shipped back to mainland China. The discovery has raised questions in Hong Kong about whether smuggled meat from the mainland would have reached the local markets. Coast stressed stringent inspections are carried out by relevant authorities to root out such illegal activities. I think the relevant uh, regulatory uh, authority in Hong Kong will, based on the risk concern, uh, any intelligence uh, uh, received, carry out very stringent inspection and um, actions, uh, law enforcement actions, to curb such illegal uh, transport of um, these products across Hong Kong. On a separate issue, Ko said authorities will maintain the red travel alert for South Korea, although there are fewer Middle East respiratory syndrome cases reported in the country. In the recent few days, um, uh, the Republic of Korea has reported fewer cases of confirmed Middle East respiratory syn syndrome cases. Uh, so uh, we will continue to monitor the situation and until um, uh, until um, the, um, there is no cases reported for the um, uh, confirmed uh, Middle East respiratory syndrome. Uh, then we can count from that day onwards two cycle of um, the incubation period before we can uh, uh, take, remove the alert. Four more MERS infections were reported in South Korea today, bringing the total to 179. Authorities there said 67 people who had tested positive for the MERS virus have recovered and been discharged from hospital since the outbreak started in May. Meanwhile, South Korean President Park Geun-hye met overseas medical experts from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and from the World Health Organization today. During the meeting, Park and the experts shared information about MERS and discussed preventive measures against the contagious disease. There was little resistance from pro-democracy activists today when Lands Department staff started clearing out tents on Tim May Avenue. But some lawmakers have criticized the government for not taking action sooner. Karen Young has the details. Wearing white helmets and green flats, staff from the Lands Department held up the final clearance notice, ordering the owners of the tents to remove their belongings. Then around 11 a.m., they moved in and started spraying the tents and taking down the tents. Some hardcore pro-democracy protesters had been camping on the pavement outside of the Legislative Council complex since the Occupy movement in September last year. But a number of them left last Thursday after Lechko voted down the political reform package. 
The clearance action comes six months after the Occupy movement ended, but Federation of Trade Unions lawmaker Wang Kok Hing says the government should have brought down the tents as soon as they sprouted. Wang says if the unlawful occupation had taken place in other districts, the authorities would have taken prompt action. He accused the government of double standards. A protester surnamed Chan, who has been staying on Timme Avenue for more than 200 days, says he would be missing the tent village. Chen says staying would not make much difference for the time being, as the political reform package has already been vetoed, and it's time to take a rest for the journey ahead. But he says he will come back in the future if it's necessary. Some people went to the site this morning with yellow umbrellas and banners to show support to the remaining protesters. Choi says it's a pity that the tents have to be cleared and says it's time to focus on the fight for gender and universal suffrage. This man from the mainland, who has been staying in one of the tents, was not happy with the short notice. He refused to leave and was forcibly taken away by plainclothes police officers. The Lens Department staff completed the clearance in about two hours with the assistance of the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department. The government says it reserves the right to prosecute the illegal occupiers and the right to dispose of the 27 tents and other objects found on the site. Karin Yang, ATV News. The acting Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Secretary says it's not feasible to restart the political reform process until after 2017. But he adds whether that happens will be up to the next chief executive. The government's political reform proposal might have been voted down last week, but pan-democrats are continuing to push for genuine universal suffrage. During a LegCo meeting, lawmakers questioned acting constitutional and mainland affairs secretary Lau Kong-wa on the issue. Democratic Party legislator James Toe asked whether discussions of the selection of the chief executive by universal suffrage without screening of candidates will resume in order to meet the aspirations of Hong Kong people. Toe also questioned if the government plans to foster the relationship between central authorities and members of the pan-democratic camp. Lau pointed out that after the political reform package was rejected by 28 lawmakers, the government will not be taking plans on constitutional development forward during its current term. The acting constitutional secretary added that in the remaining two years, it won't be legally feasible or practical to restart the five-step process and that the political reform process should be decided by the chief executive in the next term of government after 2017. Lau went on to say that the SAR government had provided opportunities for Democrats to meet central authorities, but some members chose to waste those communication opportunities. He said mutual trust must be built between the two sides and not just one. Lau echoed Chief Executive Leung Chung Yang, saying that the focus now will be on economy and livelihood issues. Gary Fan of the Neo Democrats believes society has been divided because the central government had abused the one country, two systems principle. The chairman of LegCo's Public Works Subcommittee has called on his successor in the next legislative term to ensure lawmakers don't just act as yes-men to all government proposals. And police have picked up a teenager hours after he escaped from offices at a public hospital this morning. Arthur Kaola reports. Police launched a manhunt this morning for the suspect who escaped police custody at Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The 18-year-old who was arrested for alleged drug trafficking and wounding was taken to the hospital from Wang Tai Sen Police Station after he complained of feeling unwell. While awaiting consultation at the Accident and Emergency Department, the suspect, who was guarded by two uniformed officers, managed to take off his handcuffs, dump the shirt he was wearing, and flee. The teenager has been linked to a wounding case in Siwan Shan several weeks ago, and officers found drugs on him when he was arrested. The suspect was remanded in custody after appearing in court yesterday. LegCo's Public Works Subcommittee says it had endorsed 46 government projects worth $47 billion in the last eight months. Speaking a week before its last meeting for the legislative year, the subcommittee's chairman, Alan Lowe, said it was important that the subcommittee was not just a rubber stamp for government plans. If we are to uh, 
discharge our duty as vigilant scrutineer of the administration. Uh, it is not for legislators to simply be yes men. Many of uh, the items that we manage to pass are uncontroversial, mature uh, items that uh, would provide uh, immediate benefit to uh, and relief for uh, Hong Kong people. Long City hopes the committee's new chairman for the next LegCo term, who he predicts will be from the pro-establishment camp, will follow these principles as well. Former Civic Party legislator Ronnie Tong says his think tank, Path to Democracy, which he launched with other moderate pan-democrats and academics, plans to meet the chief secretary and other groups to discuss a way forward. Speaking on a radio show this morning, Tong, who will also step down as a legislator in October, said he hoped that following the recent veto of the government's political reform proposal, a new way forward on the issue could be discussed. He says initial efforts to reach out to the administration and other groups have received positive responses. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. A man in the UK who beheaded an elderly woman thinking she was either a demon or Adolf Hitler's ghost has escaped jail time on the grounds of insanity. And leaked documents have reportedly revealed that several French leaders were spied on by US intelligence agencies. Arthur Urquiola reports. Whistleblowing website WikiLeaks has dropped another bombshell, this time claiming that the U.S. National Security Agency had spied on a string of French presidents. Citing top-secret intelligence reports and technical documents, it said that Jacques Chirac, Nicolas Sarkozy, and current French President Francois Hollande were the targets of the U.S. surveillance. The snooping is said to have taken place from 2006 until May 2012, when Hollande took over from Sarkozy. The documents revealed that Sarkozy had been considering restarting Israeli-Palestine negotiations without the U.S., and Hollande had expressed fears as early as 2012 about Greece's exit from the Eurozone. Speaking in Paris, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said although he hadn't seen the documents, he wasn't surprised by them. In his statement, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange said the French people have a right to know that their elected government was subject to hostile surveillance from a supposed ally. He also warned of more important revelations to come. A man who beheaded a woman at her London home last September has been cleared of murder charges on the grounds of insanity. Aerial footage of the incident has just been released. He was seen carrying a sharpened pole and a machete, walking through houses and smashing down garden fences after committing the crime. He was arrested by armed officers who arrived at the scene. Two psychiatrists told the court that 25-year-old Nicholas Salvador was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia and thought 82-year-old Palmer Silva was either a demon or the ghost of Adolf Hitler. Salvador had lost his job three days before the incident, had smoked cannabis, and was picked up by security cameras killing two cats. Although Salvador escaped jail time, he will be detained indefinitely at a psychiatric hospital. Power cuts in the Pakistani city of Karachi have made conditions worse, as people struggle to cope with a heat wave that has already killed more than 700 people in three days. This is because fans and air conditions are now inoperable in the 45 degree heat, forcing many to sleep on the streets. A state of emergency has been declared, with army doctors deployed at the city's hospitals. We normally see about 1,100 to 1,200 patients per 24 hours in the emergency department. In this uh, time of the uh, season, we have seen something like 1,800 to 1,900 patients per 24 hours, which is a very tremendously high figure. Government departments and schools have been suspended, while the army has set up 14 relief tents offering ice and water. The major cause of this intense heat wave in Karachi is that uh, the CPU was cut off since last five days and heat index was very high in Karachi. But forecasters say some relief should be on the way in the next few days as the sea breeze is set to return. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News.